A planned economy is a type of economic system where investment and the allocation of capital goods take place according to economy-wide economic and production plans. A planned economy may use centralized, decentralized or participatory forms of economic planning. A command economy or administrative command economy is any of the nominally planned economies of the former Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc. These terms highlight the central role of hierarchical administration in guiding the allocation of resources in these economic systems as opposed to planned coordination. Planned economies are usually associated with Soviet type central planning, which involves centralized state planning and administrative decision making. In command economies, important allocation decisions are made by government authorities and are imposed by law. Planned economies contrast with unplanned economies, specifically market economies, where autonomous firms operating in markets make decisions about production, distribution, pricing and investment. Market economies that use indicative planning are sometimes referred to as planned market economies. The traditional conception of socialism involves the integration of socially owned economic enterprises via some form of planning with direct calculation substituting factor markets. As such, the concept of a planned economy is often associated with socialism and with socialist planning. More recent approaches to socialist planning and allocation have come from some economists and computer scientists proposing planning mechanisms based on advances in computer science and information technology. Topic. Planned versus command economies Planned economies contrast with command economies. A planned economy is an economic system in which the government controls and regulates production, distribution, prices, etc. But a command economy, while also having this type of regulation, necessarily has substantial public ownership of industry. Therefore, command economies are planned economies, but not necessarily the reverse. Most of a command economy is organized in a top-down administrative model by a central authority, where decisions regarding investment and production output requirements are decided upon at the top in the chain of command, with little input from lower levels. Advocates of economic planning have sometimes been staunch critics of these command economies. For example, Leon Trotsky believed that those at the top of the chain of command, regardless of their intellectual capacity, operated without the input and participation of the millions of people who participate in the economy and who understand, respond to local conditions and changes in the economy, and therefore would be unable to effectively coordinate all economic activity. Although historians have associated planned economies with Marxist Leninist states and the Soviet economic model, some argue that the Soviet economic model did not actually constitute a plan planned economy in that a comprehensive and binding plan did not guide production and investment, therefore the further distinction of an administrative command economy emerged as a more accurate designation for the economic system that existed in the former Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc, highlighting the role of centralized hierarchical decision-making in the absence of popular control over the economy. The possibility of a digital planned economy was explored in Chile in 1971 to 1973 with the development of Project Cybersyn and by Alexander Karkovich, head of the Department of Technical Physics in Kiev in 1962. Another key point is that command economies are inherently authoritarian, whereas economic planning in general can be either participatory and democratic or authoritarian. Indicative planning is a form of planning in market economies that directs the economy through incentive-based methods. Economic planning can be practiced in a decentralized manner through different government authorities. For example, in some predominantly market-oriented and mixed economies, the state utilizes economic planning in strategic industries such as the aerospace industry. Mixed economies usually employ macroeconomic planning, while microeconomic affairs are left to the market and price system. Note to the utilization of dirigisme, or government direction of the economy through non-coercive means, as practiced in France and in Great Britain after the Second World War. The Swedish government planned public housing models in a similar fashion as urban planning in a project called Million Program, implemented 1965-1974. History In the Hellenistic and post-Hellenistic world, 
Compulsory state planning was the most characteristic trade condition for the Egyptian countryside, for Hellenistic India, and to a lesser degree the more barbaric regions of the Seleucid, the Pergamenian, the Southern Arabian, and the Parthian empires. One view of mercantilism sees it as a planned economy. The Soviet-style planned economy started with war communism 1918 to 1921. The Soviet government founded Gosplan in 1921, but the period of the NEP intervened before regular five-year plans started in 1928. Topic: <inaudible> Advantages of economic planning. The government can harness land, labors, and capital to serve the economic objectives of the state. Consumer demand can be restrained in favor of greater capital investment for economic development in a desired pattern. In international comparisons, state socialist nations compared favorably with capitalist nations in health indicators such as infant mortality and life expectancy, although the statistics concerning infant mortality are self-reported and based on varying standards. The state can begin building a heavy industry at once in an underdeveloped economy without waiting years for capital to accumulate through the expansion of light industry, and without reliance on external financing. This is what happened in the Soviet Union during the 1930s when the government forced the share of GNP dedicated to private consumption from 80% to 50%. As a result, the Soviet Union experienced massive growth in heavy industry, with a concurrent massive contraction of its agricultural sector, in both relative and absolute terms. Topic. Disadvantages of economic planning Topic. Inefficient resource distribution, surplus and shortage Critics of planned economies argue that planners cannot detect consumer preferences, shortages, and surpluses with sufficient accuracy and therefore cannot efficiently coordinate production in a market economy. A free price system is intended to serve this purpose. This difficulty was notably written about by economists Ludwig von Mises and Friedrich Hayek, who referred to subtly distinct aspects of the problem as the economic calculation problem and local knowledge problem, respectively. Whereas the former stressed the theoretical underpinnings of a market economy to subjective value theory while attacking the labor theory of value, the latter argued that the only way to satisfy individuals who have a constantly changing hierarchy of needs, and are the only ones to possess their particular individual circumstances, is by allowing those with the most knowledge of their needs to have it in their power to use their resources in a competing marketplace to meet the needs of the most consumers, most efficiently. This phenomenon is recognized as spontaneous order. Additionally, misallocation of resources would naturally ensue by redirecting capital away from individuals with direct knowledge and circumventing it into markets where a coercive monopoly influences behavior, ignoring market signals. According to Tiber R. Mackin, "...without a market in which allocations can be made in obedience to the law of supply and demand, it is difficult or impossible to funnel resources with respect to actual human preferences and goals." Topic. Suppression of economic democracy and self-management Economist Robin Honnell notes that, even if central planning overcame its inherent inhibitions of incentives and innovation, it would nevertheless be unable to maximize economic democracy and self-management, which he believes are concepts that are more intellectually coherent, consistent and just than mainstream notions of economic freedom, says Honnell. Combined with a more democratic political system, and redone to closer approximate a best-case version, centrally planned economies no doubt would have performed better. But they could never have delivered economic self-management, they would always have been slow to innovate as apathy and frustration took their inevitable toll, and they would always have been susceptible to growing inequities and inefficiencies as the effects of differential economic power grew. Under central planning neither planners, managers, nor workers had incentives to promote the social economic interest. Nor did impeding markets for final goods to the planning system enfranchise consumers in meaningful ways. But central planning would have been incompatible with economic democracy even if it had overcome its information and incentive liabilities. And the truth is that it survived as long as it did only because it was propped up by unprecedented totalitarian political power. 
Topic: <laughs> Economic instability. Studies of Eastern European planned economies in the 1950s and 1960s by both American and Eastern European economists found that, contrary to the expectations of both groups, they showed greater fluctuations in output than market economies during the same period. <laughs> Relationship with socialism While socialism is not equivalent to economic planning or to the concept of a planned economy, an influential conception of socialism involves the replacement of capital markets with some form of economic planning in order to achieve ex-ante coordination of the economy. The goal of such an economic system would be to achieve conscious control over the economy by the population, specifically, so that the use of the surplus product is controlled by the producers. The specific forms of planning proposed for socialism and their feasibility are subjects of the socialist calculation debate. Topic: <laughs> Computational economic planning. In their book Towards a New Socialism, 1993, the computer scientist Paul Cockshot from the University of Glasgow and the economist Alain Cottrell from the Wake Forest University claim to demonstrate, in detail, how a democratically planned economy built on modern computer technology is possible and drives the thesis that it would be both economically more stable than the free market economies and also morally desirable. In 1971, when the development of computer technology was still its early stages, the Socialist Allende administration of Chile launched Project Cybersyn to install a telex machine in every corporation and organization in the economy for the communication of economic data between firms and the government. The data was also fed into a computer simulated economy for forecasting. A control room was built for real-time observation and management of the overall economy. The prototype stage of the project showed promise when it was used to redirect supplies around a trucker's strike but in 1973, after CIA-backed Augusto Pinochet led a coup and then established a dictatorship under his rule, he abolished the program to move Chile towards a more liberalized market economy. Topic. Fictional portrayals of planned economies The 1888 novel Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy depicts a fictional planned economy in a United States around the year 2000 which has become a socialist utopia. The world state in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and Airstrip One in George Orwell's 1984 are both fictional examples of command economies, albeit with diametrically opposed aims. The former is a consumer economy designed to engender productivity while the latter is a shortage economy designed as an agent of totalitarian social control. Airstrip One is organized by the euphemistically named Ministry of Plenty. Other literary portrayals of planned economies were Yevgeny Zamyatin's We, which was an influence on Orwell's work. Like 1984, Ayn Rand's dystopian story Anthem was also an artistic portrayal of a command economy that was influenced by We. The difference is that it was a primitivist planned economy, as opposed to the advanced technology of We or Brave New World. Topic. See also Case studies Soviet type economies analysis of Soviet type economic planning five year plans in the Soviet Union five year plans of China OGAS a plan for creating a computer network to supervise the Soviet economy project Cybersyn a project for a computer network controlling the economy of Chile under Salvador Allende Eastern Bloc economies Cuban planned economy Economy of Venezuela case studies mixed market economies indicative planning in France First Malaysia plan 5 year plans of Argentina 5 year plans of South Korea Economy of Singapore Economy of India Topic Notes Topic Further reading Michael Elman 2014. Socialist Planning. Cambridge University Press, 3 edition. ISBN 1107427320 Gregory Grossman 1987. Command Economy. 
The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, v. 1, pp. 494–95. Karl Landauer 1947, Theory of National Economic Planning. University of California Press. Berkeley and Los Angeles, 2nd edition. Alec Nove 1987, Planned Economy. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, v. 3, pp. 879–85. Mayant, Martin, Drahakupal, Jan 2010, Transition Economies, Political Economy in Russia, Eastern Europe, and Central Asia, Wiley Blackwell, ISBN 978-0-470-59619-7 Cox, Robin 2005, The Economic Calculation Controversy, Unraveling of a Myth. 1 Divine, Pat, Democracy and Economic Planning. Polity, 2010. ISBN 978-0745634791 Mandel, Ernest. In Defense of Socialist Planning. New Left Review, Issue 159. 1986. External links An article against The Myth of the Permanent Arms Economy the Stalin model for the control and coordination of enterprises in a socialist economy.